Hi, I'm Pat Kelly. Okay, in this problem, they give us this f of x, which equals secant of x, and they give us a specific value c, in this case pi over 6, and they ask us to do quite a bit, so let's see if we can get it all done. They ask us to come up with a first degree polynomial that's going to have the same value of this function and also the same slope of this function at that value of c. And then once we come up with that, we're asked to graph both functions, the function they give us and the function we come up with. We'll see how they compare to each other. And then the final question they ask us is, what is this polynomial called? I'll try to get to that at the very end. Don't let me forget that. So let's start with the first thing they ask us to come up with is a first degree polynomial. And then they tell us a couple conditions that the value and the slopes are supposed to be the same between the two functions. So if we're supposed to come up with a first degree polynomial, I'll suggest that what we want is, let's call it p sub 1. I think they even tell us to call it p sub 1. What we want is a sub 0 plus a sub 1 times x. Okay. So first degree polynomial, because x is to the 1 power, and realize what I'm trying to set myself up for then is our ultimate answers will be the specific values for a sub 0 and a sub 1. If I get values there, I've got my function. Now the conditions they gave us, is the, the, the function we're going to come up with is supposed to have the same value as the given function at that value of c, pi over 6. So I'm interpreting that as p sub 1 of pi over 6 is supposed to equal f of pi over 6. They tell us that we're also supposed to have the same slope, so I'm interpreting that as p sub 1 prime of pi over 6 is supposed to equal f prime of pi over 6. Okay, let's actually start with the second of those two statements. I'm going to do that because take a look at what happens when we differentiate this p sub 1 function, even though we don't know what those values of a are, p prime of x equals, that's a constant, so it's gone, and this is a coefficient times x to the 1 power, so all you get is a sub 1. That's good, because now I have an expression for my first derivative. It just equals a sub 1, and I know that that first derivative is supposed to end up equaling f prime of pi over 6. So I'm going to come over here and differentiate my given function in order to find out what that f prime of pi over 6 equals. So we're differentiating secant of x, which is secant of x times tangent of x. And then as I mentioned, we're doing that really because we want to find out what f prime of pi over 6 is secant pi over 6 times tangent pi over 6. You could always resort to a calculator, but don't rob yourself of all the fun. Sometimes you just want to try to see if you can do it in your head. Secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2, so we'll reciprocate. Tangent is sine over cosine. Sine of pi over 6 is a half. Cosine, we just said, was square root of 3 over 2. Flip and multiply, and we're looking at that. So it looks like our f prime of pi over 6 is going to end up equaling 2 thirds. All right, and the significance of that is from over here, p prime of pi over 6, which equals p prime of anything, is just going to equal a sub 1. This equal sign comes from that equation. On the right-hand side, we're going to have 2 thirds because that equals our f prime pi over 6. Okay, from outside in, that's this equation. And on the very in side, we get our value for a sub 1. All right, now let's go back to our p sub 1. And since we now know this, we have a new and improved p sub 1 of x. It equals our a sub 0. We didn't figure that out yet. Plus a sub 1, which is 2 thirds times x. 
And then I'll use the other piece of information they gave me, this p sub 1 of pi over 6, p sub 1 of pi over 6, that equals this expression, a sub 0 plus 2 thirds times pi over 6. Right, and that's supposed to equal, from here, where do you want two aster asterisks maybe? That's supposed to equal f of pi over 6. Let me skip a space, maybe, because the space I'm going to skip is, let's just go ahead and evaluate f of pi over 6. So f of pi over 6 comes from our original f function. I'll even squeeze it in here if you want. f of pi over 6 equals secant of pi over 6, pi over 6 secant of pi over 6. I think we did that once. That's 2 over square root of 3. Point is, back over here, f of pi over 6 is 2 over square root of 3. And I'll grab another color to circle because outside is this equation, but inside this is what's going to give us our value for a sub 0. So let's solve this equation for a sub 0. That equals, uh, I think I can just do this algebra slash arithmetic in my head, because this will be 2 pi over 9, uh, pi over 9, but I'm subtracting it, so pi over 9 looks good. Okay, and I'd be happy with that, but we are going to end up going to a graphing utility right now, in a minute, and graph this. So if you'd rather end up entering in a decimal approximation, you can. Again, I'm not bothered by that at all if you want to keep your fractions. I'll grab a calculator and compare with you if you're going to get a decimal. So I'm just entering 2 over square root of 3 and then subtracting pi over 9. So maybe to four decimal places, 0. 8056. Alright, as a decimal or a fraction, here's where we're at. Is we have an a sub 0 value, we had an a sub 1 value, so we now have a, a good, a, a best answer for p sub 1. So let me write that down here. p sub 1 of x equals a sub 0, which is that value we just found, 0. 0, 5, 6, plus a sub 1, what we found over here as 2 thirds, times x, coming from there. Okay, now, just to get our bearings, they asked us to find a function, a first degree polynomial, that's going to have the same value as the given function and the same slope of the given function at that value of pi over 6. This is our guy, this is our candidate anyway. We're going to propose that this works. To visualize that this works, they wanted us to go to a graphing utility. So I'll grab a graphing utility and we're going to enter two different functions here. For my y sub 1, y sub 1, that's the original function, secant of x. For my y sub 2, we're going to enter this function we just came up with y sub 2 equals, I'll enter that expression. Okay, I'm entering mine, secant of x, or 1 over cosine of x, and y sub 2. I'm entering that function we just came up with. Whew. All right, when you've got yours, go ahead and graph. Now, if you're seeing both graphs, you'll see that they do meet, they do touch each other. That's actually at pi over 6. That was what we made happen with uh, the way we created the function. If you're not quite seeing it enough, I might even encourage you to zoom in a little bit. In my window right now, I'm all the way down at a negative 2.5 to 2.5 for both x and y. But zooming in that way, you can really see that yes, the functions are touching each other, but also it looks like they have that same slope there. In fact, because that polynomial we came up with is to the first power, it's a straight line, that is the tangent line of f of x equals secant of x at pi over 6. 
All right, so visually that's what we've accomplished. All right, and the last thing they asked us was, what is this polynomial called? This is what they wanted you to think of, is that this is called the first Taylor polynomial for f of x, which is secant of x, at pi over 6. And the point there is that in this lesson you were learning about Taylor polynomials and Maclaurin polynomials, and this is the development of either one. For us, we found the first Taylor polynomial for that function. A lot of good work, but I think we did well. So, thanks, and I hope that helped.